Good morning. You guys are going to be listening to a read aloud today. This is part of your uh, social emotional learning. And this is just focusing on your, um, just, you're just listening to the read aloud. So it's nothing you have to do. This is a great book. This is a great author, Patricia Polacco. Oh my goodness, she's one of my favorite authors. And um, this book that she wrote is Thank You, Mr. Falker. Thank you, Mr. Falker. Patricia Polacco. <clears throat> Says to George Falker, the real Mr. Falker, you will be forever, you will forever be my hero. I wonder why he would be forever her hero. Hmm. this page with the grandpa and the little girl it looks like a grandpa and a little girl looks like some honey I wonder what they're making let's see the grandpa held the jar of honey so that all the family could see then dipped a ladle into it and drizzled honey on the cover of a small book the little girl had just turned five stand up little one he cooed I did this for your mother, your uncles, your brother, and now you. Then he handed the book to her. Taste. She dipped her finger into the honey and put it to her mouth. What is that taste? The grandma asked. The little girl answered, sweet. Then all of the family said in a single voice, yes, and so is knowledge. But knowledge is like the bee that made that sweet honey. You have to chase it through the pages of a book. The little girl knew that the promise to read was at last hers. Soon she was going to learn to read. Now if you notice I have little sticky notes. These have um, vocabulary words on them. And if you know me, I use sticky notes in my books to take notes. That's the only way I do it. It's the way I learn. Trisha, the littlest girl in the family, grew up loving books. Her school teacher mother read to her every night. Her red-headed brother brought her books home from school and shared them. And whenever she visited the family farm, her grandfather or grandmother read to her by the stone fireplace. When she turned five and went to kindergarten, most of all, she hoped to read. Each day, she saw the kids in the first grade across the hall reading. And before the year was over, some of the kids in her own class began to read. Not Trisha. Still, she loved being at school because she could draw. The other kids would crowd around her and watch her do her magic with the crayons. In first grade, you'll learn to read, her brother said. And here they are, gathered around her while she's drawing. She is an excellent artist. <clears throat> Look at her face. She's reading. Looks like maybe mom's reading to her over here. In first grade, Trisha sat in a circle with the other kids. They were all holding our neighborhood, their first reader, sounding out letters and words. They said b, b, oi, b, oi, and l, l, uk, look. The teacher smiled at them when they put all the sounds together and got a word right. But when Trisha looked at the page, at a page, all she saw was wiggling shapes. And when she tried to sound out words, the kids laughed at her. Trisha, what are you looking at in that book? They'd say. I'm reading, she'd say back to them. But her teacher would move on to the next person. Always when it was her turn to read, her teacher had to help her with every single word. And while the other kids moved up into the second reader and third reader, she stayed alone in our neighborhood. Trisha began to feel different. She began to feel dumb. Here she is with her grandma. 
The harder words got for the little girl, the more and more time she spent drawing. How she loved to draw, or just sitting and dreaming, or when she could go in for walks with her grandmother. One summer day, she and her grandmother were walking together in the small woods behind their farm. It was twilight. The air was sweet and warm. Fireflies were just coming up from the grasses, and they walked. Trisha said, Grandma, do you think I'm different? Of course, her grandma answered. To be different is the miracle of life. You see all those little fireflies? Everyone is different. Do you think I'm smart? Trisha didn't feel smart. Her grandma hugged her. You are the smartest, quickest, dear little thing ever. Right then, the little girl felt safe in her grandma's arms. Reading didn't matter so much. Just like they're laying down in the grass looking at the stars. Trisha's grandma had, used to say, the stars were holes in the sky. They were the light of heaven coming from the other side. And she used to say that someday she would be on the other side where the lights come, where the light comes from. One evening they lay on the grass together and counted the lights from heaven. You know, her grandma said, all of us will go there someday. Hang on to the grass or you'll lift right off the ground and there you'll be. They laughed and they both hung on to the grass. But it was not long after that night that her grandma must have let go of the grass because she went to where the lights were on the other side. And not long after that, Trisha's grandpa let go of the grass too. School seemed harder and harder now. Reading was just plain torture. When Sue Ellen read her page or Tommy Bob read his page, they read so easily that Trisha would watch the top of their heads to see if something was happening to their heads that wasn't happening to hers. And numbers were the hardest thing of all to read. She never added anything right. Line the numbers up before you add them, the teacher would say. But when Trisha tried, the numbers looked like a stack of blocks wobbly and ready to fall. She just knew she was dumb. Then one day... Her mother announced that she had gotten a teaching job in California, a long way from the family farm in Michigan. <clears throat> Even though her grandma and grandpa were gone, the little girl didn't want to move. Maybe, though, the teachers and kids in her new school wouldn't know how dumb she was. She and her mother and brother moved across the country in a two-tone 1949 Plymouth. It took five days. There's mom driving, being super careful. But at the new school, it was the same. When she tried to read, she stumbled over words. The cat, cat, cat r r ran. She was reading like a baby in the third grade. And when her teacher read along with them and called on Trisha for an answer, she gave the wrong answer every time. Hey, dummy, a boy called out on the playground. How come you're so dumb? Other kids stood near him and they laughed. Trisha could feel the tears burning in her eyes. How she longed to go back to her grandparents' farm in Michigan. <clears throat> They were not being very nice. Now Trisha wanted to go to school less and less. I have a sore throat, she'd say to her mom, or I have a stomach ache. She dreamed more and more and drew more and more. She hated, hated, hated school. Then when Trisha started fifth grade, the school was all a buzz. There was a new teacher. He was tall and elegant. Everybody loved his striped coat and slick gray pants. He wore the neatest clothes. All the usual teacher's pets gathered around him. Stevie Joe and Alice Marie, Davy and Michael Lee. But right from the start, it didn't seem to matter to Mr. Falker which kids were the cutest or the smartest or the best at anything. Move that so you could see his suit. 
<clears throat> he's got a picture hanging. He's showing. It's like he's having a great time. Mr. Fucker would stand behind Trisha whenever she was drawing and whisper, This is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Do you know how talented you are? When he said this, even the kids who teased her would turn around in their seats and look at her drawings. But they still laughed whenever she gave a wrong answer. Then one day she had to stand up and read, which she hated. She was stumbling through a page in Charlotte's Web, and the page was going all fuzzy when the kids began to laugh out loud. Mr. Fucker in his plaid jacket and his butterfly tie said, Stop! Are you all so perfect that you can look at another person and find fault in her? That was the last day anyone laughed out loud or made fun of her, all except Eric. And he sat behind Trisha for two whole years, but he seemed almost to hate her. Trisha didn't know why. He waited by the door of the classroom for her and pulled her hair. He waited for her on the playground, leaned in her face, and called her Toad. Trisha was afraid to turn any corner for fear Eric would be there. She felt completely alone. The only time she was really happy was when she was around Mr. Falker. He let her erase the blackboards. Only the best students got to do that. He patted her on the back where, whenever she got something right, and he looked hard and mean at the kids who teased her. Oh, this is Eric. He is not very nice. And these words over here on the back, there's some say stupid, dummy, you don't belong. Um, not one of us, ugly, dumbbell, no hope, you're ugly. So, yeah, these are just not good words. Eric was a mean guy. <clears throat> They're out playing recess. And here's Trisha. But the nicer Mr. Falker was to Trisha, the worse Eric treated her. He got all the other kids to wait for her on a playground on the caf or in the cafeteria or even in the bathroom and to jump out and call her stupid or ugly. And Trisha began to believe them. And she discovered that she, if she asked to go to the bathroom just before recess, she could hide under the inside stairwell during the free time and not have to go outside at all. In that dark place... She felt completely safe. So they're all outside while she's hiding under the stairs. That's sad. <clears throat> Here's Eric. Oh, there comes Mr. Falker. And Trisha. But one day at recess, Eric followed her to her secret hiding place. Have you become a mole, he laughed. And he pulled her out into the hall and danced around her. Dumbbell, dumbbell, maggoty old dumbbell. Trisha buried her head in her arms and curled up into a ball. Suddenly she heard footsteps. It was Mr. Fucker. He marched Eric right down to the office. When he came back, he found Trisha. I don't think you'll have to worry about that boy again, he said softly. What was he teasing you about, little one? I don't know, Trisha shrugged. Trisha was sure Mr. Falker began, believed that she could read. She had learned to memorize what the kid next to her was reading, or she would wait for Mr. Falker to help her with a sentence. Then she'd say the same thing that he did. Good, he would say. Then one day, Mr. Falker asked her to stay after school and help wash the blackboards. He put on music and brought out little sandwiches as they worked and talked. All at once, he said, let's play a game. I'll shout out letters. You write them on the board with a wet sponge as quickly as you can. A, he shouted. She wiped a watery A. Eight, he shouted. She made a watery eight. Fourteen, three, D, M, Q, he shouted out. He shouted out many, many letters and numbers. Then he walked up behind her and together they looked at the board. It was a watery mess. Trisha knew that none of the letters or numbers looked like they should. She threw the sponge down and tried to run. wonder what he was trying to do by doing that. Oh, 
And she's crying. She's got her handkerchief. Let's see what happens. But Mr. Fokker caught her arm and sank to his knee in front of her. You poor baby, he said. You think you're dumb, don't you? How awful for you to be so lonely and afraid, she sobbed. But, little one, don't you understand? You don't see letters or numbers the way other people do. And you've gotten through school all this time and fooled many, many good teachers. He smiled at her. That took cunning and smartness and such, such bravery. Then he stood up and finished washing, washing the board. We're going to change all that. Girl, you're going to read. I promise you that. Now, almost every day after school, she met with Mr. Falker and Miss Plessy, a reading teacher. They did a lot of things she didn't even understand. At first, she made circles in sand and then big sponge circles on the blackboard, going from left to right, left to right. Another day, they flicked letters on the screen and Trisha shouted them out. Still, other days, she worked in, with wooden blocks and built words, letters, 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 words, 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 always sounding them out. And that felt good. But though she'd read words, she hadn't read a whole sentence. And deep down, she still felt dumb. And then, one spring day, had it been three months or four months, they had started, since they had started, Mr. Falker put a book in front of her. She'd never seen it before. He picked a paragraph in the middle of a page and pointed at it. Almost as if it were magic or as if light poured into her brain, the words and sentences started to shape, take shape on the page as never they never had before. She marched them off to, slowly she read a sentence, then another, and another, and finally she would read a paragraph, and she understood the whole thing. She didn't notice that Mr. Falker and Miss Plexi had tears in their eyes. She was reading, guys. That night, Trisha ran home without stopping to catch her breath. She bounded up the footsteps threw open her front door and ran through the dining room to the kitchen. She climbed up on the cupboard and grabbed a jar of honey. Then she went into the living room and found the book on the shelf, the very book that her grandpa had shown her so many years ago. She spooned honey on the cover and tasted the sweetness and said to herself, The honey is sweet and so is knowledge. But knowledge is like the bee who made the honey. It has to be chased through the pages of a book. Then she held the book, honey and all, close to her chest. She could feel tears roll down her cheeks, but they weren't tears of sadness. She was happy, so very happy. The rest of the year became an odyssey of discovery and adventure for the little girl. She learned to love school. I know that because the girl was me, Patricia Polacco. I saw Mr. Falker again some 30 years later at a wedding. I walked up to him and introduced myself. At first, he had difficulty placing me. Then I told him who I was and how he changed my life so many years ago. He hugged me and asked me what I did for a living. Why, Mr. Falker? I answered. I make books for children. Thank you, Mr. Falker. Thank you. So Mr. Falker was her teacher, fifth grade teacher, and helped her learn how to read. And now she's making books for all children. She also does the illustrations. I didn't tell you guys that. She does the illustrations in all her books because she's a great artist. She does a fantastic job. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this book. We will be using this later on in the lesson um, in your journal. <clears throat> but um, for right now, I just wanted you to listen and take a little break and relax. So I hope you didn't you enjoyed it. Bye, guys.